Timetable, part two. In part two of the timetable tutorial, I will show you how to create a timetable formation, how to turn that formation into a service, how to set up the service, how to go to, how to utilize go to and go via instructions, how to set a service to load, unload and wait, how to couple to and from formations, and finally, how to end a service. The timetable is how we utilize the formations we set up in the previous tutorial section. If you are unsure about how to set up the timetable defaults, please go back and review timetables part one. For this section, we'll be working in the timetable window of the timetable asset we created earlier. Please ensure that you have set your scenario definition as the play and editor scenario before proceeding. This is done by right clicking on the scenario definition file and selecting play and editor scenario from the list that pops up. This step is very important. To begin with, please right click anywhere on the grid and select create a new formation. This has brought up a new panel in the details window on the right hand side of the editor. Name is where we set the name of the consist. In our case, we'll be calling the consist player 09. From the train entry, we click the drop down marker and search for demo 01. This gives us our three more formations to pick from. If you cannot see your formation, you may have had the issue I mentioned earlier where it's hidden in the editor. All you'll need to do is go to your formations file uh, in Windows Explorer and drag the formations back in. And it will come up with an error message saying it can't duplicate it. That's okay. All that means is that basically it's making the file visible to you again. We can ignore spawn in vault and the spawn configuration boxes. For the spawn types, we have three choices. The parked preset starts a locomotive cold and dark. This is useful if you wish to create a scenario uh, starting at a depot, for instance, with the player on foot, we set the locomotive up from cold. The running stop preset represents a locomotive that has its engine started and is awaiting the driver to key in. Set the reverser and release the brakes. The final setting is the running active preset where the train is already keyed in and it is as simple as setting the direction of travel and releasing the brakes to go before applying the throttle. We will be using, for the sake of this tutorial, the running active preset. Spawn facing for spawn facing does exactly what it says on the tin. This sets whether to spawn the formation facing forwards or backwards on the route. We generally only know which direction this needs to be once we have placed the formation on the map. For our purposes, we're going to leave this as forwards. The spawn location drop down, this little arrow here, look, I click it, it goes, I click it, it comes back, is where the for we set where the formation is spawning. We press on the pick location button. We then go to the route map and we select an area on the map we would like the train to be. Right now, that's a little bit too close to the end of the marker. So what I can do is go back, select pick location again, go to route map, and click there. There we go, we've moved the train. Remember, you will only see this icon if you have set your scenario definition as the play and editor scenario. The pointed section, this area here, is the front of the locomotive. We can now close down the sp spawn location. We can ignore initial propulsion mode and initial formation range, and these are not needed by formation. I may, however, cover what these are used for in a future set of miscellaneous tutorials. Below these, we have rail vehicles. Click on the arrow by the zero, and a whole wealth of information becomes available. We are only interested, however, in the rail vehicle ID. This is the ID we plug into the relevant section of the scenario definition file and the objective file, which we will do now. Right click on rail vehicle ID and click copy. Go to the definition. We want to start the scenario driving the train. To find out what this is, we need to take an extra step because I don't know what this is at the moment. So we go back to our content manifest. We go down to the West Somerset content. We look for the scenarios folder, which you can find in the list. And we want to load up 
Let's load up Service 1 and see if that's right. It is. Now, we're going to create a child object of West Somerset Railway SC01 objectives. We do this by right-clicking and creating a child blueprint class. Click off. Do not worry about this for now, as we will be deleting this as soon as we are finished. We now load the objectives, and we look down this list. In the PD1 Climber Board 1, where it's an action seat blueprint, it says the seat component is engineer L underscore L brackets seat. So what we will do is type in engineer underscore L seat. And that's our starting name. We now go back to the timetable, ensure that this is what we've got copied, the rail vehicle ID. We go to our definition, starting train seat region GUID, click there, right click there, click paste. We've now inputted the train ID. We can save the definition file. We now need to go to the objectives file and in general setup, make sure the rail vehicle ID is set to the same rail vehicle. We want the rail vehicle model the reference model actor which is the rvm so rvm underscore ws wsr and the class 09 and for the view actor we would like rvv west somerset railway class 09 we can compile and save the objective blueprint and we don't need to worry about that anymore. A lot of working with the editor is currently trial and error and reverse engineering certain files is the only way to find out what the information you need. More about how will that we do that will be covered in a miscell uh, miscellaneous sorry, tutorial at a later date. We will come back to numbering overrides as part of the miscellaneous tutorials I'll be doing at a later date. For now, click compile and save the timetable. You may now close the object, objective child you created. Go back to the file you created, select it, and delete it. If this comes up, just click the delete button. Addendum. One important thing I forgot when adding the information to the objectives file is the formation name. We will call this player09. The reason for doing this will become clear in the next section. Our next step is to create a service for our formation. Click on the blue node on the formation we created previously, drag away from the marker and stop. This will give us a menu. Select create a new service. And again, a wealth of information becomes available to us in the details tab. Name is where we name our consist. For the sake of this tutorial, this will be player 09. We can ignore the friendly name. We want to leave is player driver ticked for this service. When creating an AI only service, you would untick this checkbox. So this tick box here. At the moment, we don't need to worry about the formation driving end and the cab driving end. I will cover these in later tutorials. We don't need a description, map point A, map point B, or map waypoints. The spawn with engineer and spawn with conductor checkboxes. Set whether to have the locomotive spawn with a driver and a second man or woman who will sit in the second seat. This will be covered in depth in a later tutorial under the miscellaneous ones I will be doing. Create after delay is used if we want to use the, time, the scenario start time. When selected and with a delay of zero, the service box displays a start at level load message and I will show you that now. There we go, start at level load. I'll untick that for now. If we were now, if I was to then, for example, tick it again and set a dwell time, a scheduled dwell time of one minute, it now says start at level load plus one minute. We'll set that back to zero and we'll untick create after delay. We won't be using that in this tutorial. We'll set a start time, which for our tutorial is 7.30 a.m. This is inputted in the start time field. So I want 
073000. And it's now changed to 7.30 is the start time. We can leave the minimum dwell time as is, as it's not being used by us. So that's this one here. We can leave that. Base service priority can be ignored as there are ways it will be described in a more in-depth tutorial on scenario creation to set the priority of trains. Service class we will leave as passenger. However, this can be set to freight. This is especially important for routes that have differing speeds for freight and passenger trains as passenger trains should be set to passenger, including ECS movements, and freight trains should be set to freight. Add EOTD, this checkbox here, which is currently false, it's simply where we want to add an end of train device to this locomotive. We can leave this unticked for this demonstration scenario. We don't touch the ancillary speed limit class for our formation. What this is supposed to do will be covered in a miscellaneous tutorial at a later date. We will leave the formation speed limit override at zero. To be noted though, this is where we can force the train to go below most posted speed limits, such as limiting our train to a maximum of five mile an hour, or in the case of the re-record scenario for the Flying Scotsman, allow the player to travel faster than the train's normal speed limit without penalty. We leave the formation speed limit class override as none. End of service shutdown state and its uses will be covered in a later set of tutorials going more in depth in the timetable. We can leave everything in the passenger info system alone. This is generally used for getting the PIS to work for both train and, I believe, station. We can ignore the AI section and the simulator section for now. We will come back to the AI section in a later set of tutorials. The simulated section will be covered in a later tutorial in this series. We ignore the score section, as these are set in the definition file. Finally, we have outgoing rail vehicles. For now, we can ignore this, but it will become very important when we get to coupling two formations together and, more importantly, uncoupling them. Our next step is to make our first go-to or stop-at instruction. We will make our service stop short of the concept it is due to couple to. We click on the red node of our Player 09 service and drag away before selecting go-to. I have also created the formation we will eventually be coupling to and placed it in world so we know where we need to stop short in this instruction we have added. We have called this formation player consist for the sake of this demonstration, here. Now, looking at the stop at instruction, which is from a go to. Destination display name is generally used for stop at and go via instructions that are not on a platform, siding, portal or yard head shunt. If you input something in here, it will override the destination display name of the aforementioned ribbons. As we will be stopping short of a consist on an exact point within the ribbon we place the coaching stock, I will set a name here and call it Stop Short for Brevity. You can name this whatever you like as long as it makes sense to the player. The destination drop down list gives us a list of the name track ribbons in the route. This is a quick way of selecting the ribbon you wish this instruction to be set at. We will be using this on a later go to instruction. Below this, you have a pick location button. This can be used to pick a specific location on an unmarked section of track or a marked section. If we select a marked ribbon, it will populate the destination drop down with the location, much like we're placing formations. We can pick a location on the 2D map and fine tune it if necessary in the main viewport. I will now demonstrate both. So, we're going to pick a location by clicking pick location, go to the route map. I'm zoomed in. I'm going to select this point here. We now go back to the timetable, and as you can see, it's populated the destination with Minehead Bay Siding 2. It's given the ribbon reference and the ribbon location. For specific location in marker allows us to override the normal stopping position on a track ribbon and force it to be the exact point we just picked via pick location. You won't use this all the time, but it comes in handy during shunting scenarios where you want to force the player to stop short of stock before coupling. We will now tick the checkbox as that is what we're hoping to achieve with this go to. We're going to go to the main viewport now. 
and look at where the consist is. So the player consist is parked here. And we can see exactly where we're stopping on the ribbon. Now, if I wanted to stop a bit closer to that, what I could do is go back to the timetable, select pick location, go to the viewport and click on the ribbon. We're now much closer to the stock and we will leave that there. Go via set here. So this is this area here will force the player to take certain tracks to reach their objective. These are hidden from the player, so they should only be used in areas with automatic point work. We should always avoid using these in areas where the player must manually change the points. Points, of course, are also known globally as switches. Next is the go-to condition drop-down and the go-to tolerance. Overlap in the... <sighs> Sorry. Overlap in the drop-down menu allows the train to overlap the marker by the amount specified in the go-to tolerance. This tolerance defaults to one meter, boo, but we can set it up at up to 10 meters, loads of room. Front is used when you'd like the front of the service to be on the marker. Back is when you wish the rear of the service to be over the marker. Within sounds like it would mean the whole ribbon, but what it actually means is that the formation range is visible within the marker. Contained within requires the entire formation to be within range of the marker set. For the most part, we're using within for the sake of this tutorial. If we deviate away from this, I will explain why. So we're actually going to use within, and we're going to set it to 250 centimeters or 2.5 meters. As this is generally what you'll set the player tolerance to. For AI, it's usually 500 centimeters or 5 meters. Fail if pass through is pretty self explanatory. If this is left checked, should the player overshoot the marker, they will fail their objective. We are going to untick this for the sake of this demonstration. Has scheduled arrival time can be set to either explicit, set by the scenario author, or simulated, set by completing a simulation where the simulation, based on IAO timings, works out the scheduled time of arrival. This can be of use for player services, but should never be used on AI services. Bad things can happen if AI services can't make scheduled times of arrival. Has scheduled completion time is the time at which the stop at instruction should be completed. Again, this can be set directly by the scenario author or by simulating the timetable. There'll be more on simulating the timetable in the next section of this tutorial run. Um, as a note, never ever set a scheduled time of arrival or a scheduled completion time on a go via node. Waiting time is how long the player will have to wait once they've stopped on the marker. I generally tend to use this if I don't have STA or SCT set. It's most useful on a route like the West Somerset Railway to simulate token exchanges. As we are not using objective blueprints in this tutorial, I will set the wait time here to one minute. Early tolerance and late tolerance affect the score. They default to five minutes and I tend to leave them set at this. You are of course free to play around with this setting and see what happens. Main nine only is useful for preventing freight services from entering loops and uh, yards. I've never come across a use for this as of yet, but if I do, it will be under its own tutorial in the planned miscellaneous tutorials I'm producing at a later date. Allow reversing is useful when you need a train to reverse to reach its destination and it, would normally, and it wouldn't normally be allowed to. We don't need to set this for the sake of this tutorial, so we'll leave it unchecked. I need to check my fellow gameplay gurus what manually controlled mainline maneuvers is, so we will leave this unchecked and move on. Is stopping is what designates this as a stop at, or rather go to instruction. If we untick this box, the stop at becomes a go via command that will show on the HUD. The general rule of thumb for the dispatch beyond instruction is that unless you need the player to face a red light until various other tasks are completed, you should be having this ticked. Dispatch beyond will book several blocks in advance of the current stop at and give you a green light. Unchecking this means you won't get a green light until an action such as a passenger boarding or simple stop at instruction has been completed. Initial pathing direction we normally leave as, uh, as any, although if we're having issues we can set this to forwards, backwards, same direction and reverse direction to see if that solves any issues raised via a simulation. 
This is incredibly important and useful for when using turntables. There is a guide on the um, DTG forums, which I will leave a link to in the description of this video, on how to use turntables, and that involves using the initial pathing direction. Simulated, this area here, we do not need to worry about. Player checkpoint in the player section denotes should this instruction be a resume from last checkpoint option, should the player pass a signal at danger or derail, etc., following a game end. We'll leave this checked as I'd like this to be a player checkpoint. The three hide options work as follows. If we hide the objective notification, it will not show on the top left of the HUD as an objective. If we hide the completion, this should prevent the objective complete pop-up from popping up. Finally, Hiding the marker should remove the marker from the HUD, though I am unsure if this actually does anything. So that's these three here. Use stop marker position. We use the stop markers at stations. For example, if they've been correctly set up for the route. For example, on the ECML, if we had a five car train, this would automatically set the ribbon to start and move back from the um, five car stop marker. For the sake of this go to stop at objective, we'll not be using this so we can untick it. The rest of the information in the details panel can be ignored. Our next step is the couple to instruction. Again, drag away from the free red node on the timetable and let go. We will now select couple. This has popped up a new couple to instruction. Before we do anything else, we will drag from the blue node on the player consist we created and link it to the blue node on the couple to instruction. Click on the stop short action and look at the destination field. In our case, this is Minehead Bay siding two. Click back on the coupling instruction and from the destination drop down, select Minehead Bay siding two. You can also use pick location should you wish to do so. Although you can force a specific location with coupling instructions, it is highly advised that you do not unless you know exactly what you are doing. We also don't require any hidden go vies for this instruction as the player train is already in the right location to couple to the service. You can set arrival and completion times here if you wish so wish. Though remember, for AI services, never to set an arrival time just in case this cannot be met. I tend not to use scheduled time of arrivals and scheduled completion times here. Waiting time is how long we wait for this instruction to complete, once the two formations are coupled together. This defaults as 10 seconds, though I tend to set this to zero, which I will do so now. Note that the wait 10 seconds has disappeared from the couple box. Early and late tolerances are the same as with the go-to stop at instruction. We don't need to worry about them or touch them in this section. We can also ignore the mainline only and allow reversing checkboxes as they shouldn't need to be used during coupling instructions. If you ever find a reason you need to use them here, please let me know. Dispatch beyond instruction is exactly the same as with the go to instruction. It can be useful to set this here if we're in a yard with automatic points. As we will need to change the point work switches later, it is better if we leave this instruction unchecked for the sake of this tutorial. Initial pathing search direction we can leave as any. If we find any problems during the simulation, we may need to specify a direction from the drop down list. Now, this next section is very important. This formation end is the end facing the consist we wish to couple to of our player train. In our case, in this demo, we note that the formation end that will be coupling to the stock ahead is the back of the formation, so we'll set this now to back. To find out the other formation end, we go into the world view and look at the formation we wish to connect to. I'll just fly down to it. You navigate through the world map. You see where we set the player stop there as well. So this is the front of the consist and we know this because of this blue arrow coming away from the consist. It denotes that this is the front. I will now go to 
having demonstrated this in the world view, I will now go back to the timetable. And if we look, thankfully for us, other formation end is already set to back. If the consist was facing the other way around, we would set this to front. We can give the coupling target a friendly name below this. For the sake of this tutorial, I will call this formation coaching stock. We can ignore the simulated section. Under, play, under the player section, we have three options. These are essentially the same as those located in the go to instruction. We, for the sake of this tutorial, will be unteching player checkpoint as I don't desire this to be a resume point. We will leave the two hide options unchecked as well. We can ignore formation configuration for the sake of this tutorial. I may cover this in a later miscellaneous tutorial. Outgoing rail vehicles is where you can see if you set the instruction com uh, correctly. In our case, we have. We have the class 09 on the front, with the five coaches we just coupled to behind us. That concludes the section on coupling. Load, unload and wait. I've gone ahead and created a few extra go-to instructions to move us from the bay to mine head up platform. This involves bringing the stock out past the mine head level crossing, then pushing back into the up platform at mine head. To note, when coming from the bay side of mine head, you will always need to go out behind the mine head level crossing to access the sidings in the bay or to up access the upside platform and sidings. This is due to how the signaling is set up and is as per reality. If you need a refresher on go to instructions, please return to the go to stop at section of this video. I would like the player to wait <laughs> before uncoupling from their stock. This is done using a load unload instruction. So as before, Click on the red node and drag it away from it. Select load and unload from the drop down list. We can again set scheduled time of arrivals and scheduled completion times here. For the sake of this tutorial, we won't, so we can ignore these settings. The same goes for the early and late tolerances. Dispatch Beyond has already been covered previously in this tutorial. Tutorial. For the sake of this tutorial, we do not want to dispatch beyond this instruction, so we leave it unticked. Loading criteria is where we set what we wish the instruction to do. To make this a load instruction, we untick unload. To make it an unload instruction, we untick load. Having both ticked means passengers will both board and disembark the train at stations. Unticking both of these will turn the instruction from a load and or unload instruction into a wait instruction. We will untick both as I wish to use a wait instruction in this tutorial. As you can see, it's changed from load unload to wait. Use load percentage would be used to set how much we want the train to be loaded by according to a percentage value. This will be covered in, late, in a later miscellaneous tutorial. Minimum time is the minimum time the doors need to be opened for during a load or unload instruction, and the time we will wait if the instruction is set to await instead of load or unload. I would like us to wait for 30 seconds, so where it says one minute here in the minimum time, we will set this to 30 seconds. Door side. Normally you can leave this to auto but sometimes it may get a little bit confused, especially if you've got a uh, track with platforms either side, one being a down platform, one being an up platform. In that case, you would click the drop down box and you select either left, right, or both sets of doors. Lock doors to complete. That means that to complete this instruction, we would need to have unlocked the doors to allow passengers to load and then to lock the doors before it completes. We don't need this in the wait instruction, so we will untick it. Important, when using a load or unload instruction, you will need to check the specific cargo type box and then select passengers from the cargo drop down. You'll get a compiler error if you fail to do this. So you click specific cargo type and down here where it says cargo type, click, the, click on the none box, type in pass 
and it will give you one asset and you get a passenger data asset like so we don't need this so i will clear this we've already spoken about the areas from simulated downwards so we will not cover this in this tutorial this concludes the weight and load and unload section Decoupling. We now want to uncouple the consist from the locomotive. This is done by clicking again on the empty red node and dragging away from it, then selecting uncouple from the drop down list. This has created the uncouple command. Again, you can see if I scroll up, <laughs> in a scheduled arrival and or completion time, a waiting time, and a, and you can of course play around again with the early and late tolerances. For the sake of this tutorial, we'll change the waiting time from 10 seconds to zero so that the next timetable task occurs directly after this one. We will not be setting a scheduled arrival or completion time. As you can see, setting that to zero, it's now got rid of the wait 10 seconds. We can also see the dispatch beyond instruction here. Again, for the sake of this tutorial, I will leave this as unchecked. Uncouple count is the amount of carriages we will be uncoupling from our train. In our case for this demonstration, that is the five coaches we picked up earlier from the siding. So we'll set this to five. Now we must choose the formation end. As the coaches were facing towards mine head, we want to select back for this formation end. Couple target friendly name, we just call this um loose consist we can once again ignore save data and simulated and the formation configuration we'll move on to outgoing rail vehicles as you can see having selected the number of consist elements to uncouple from to uh, as five and this formation end to back we are left with the class 09 by itself here zero and the five coaches also starting from zero and going to four important to remember when working with unreal everything except in the timetable itself starts at zero the timetable starts at one we'll go over this and how important this is to note when we work on the, when I do the objectives tutorial. With regards to the blue node under the red node, we will come back to this in the next tutorial, as we do not need to touch it for the sake of the basics we're going through at the moment. This concludes the uncoupled tutorial. End service. This step, although short, is important. This ends the service, which will also end, in our case, the scenario. All services must have an end service node, otherwise you will get a non-critical compile error when trying to compile the timetable. Generally, if a service doesn't end, it can play havoc with the dispatcher. Drag away from the red node on the last item of your service. In this case, it is the wait time I've added following two more stop ats to get the player locomotive where I would like it. It's on the upside of the mine head on the parallel track to the up platform. Notice that end service has an empty blue node that we can drag away from. This gives us two options. We can create a new service with the current train or couple to a formation and create a new service that way. We will not be doing this for the sake of our tutorial. Instead, we will click on the compile timetable button and then click on save to save the timetable. This concludes part two of the timetable tutorial. In this section, we have learned how to create formations in the timetable, how to turn these formations into services, how to set stop at and go via instructions, how to set wait, load and unload instructions, and how to end a service. These are just the very basic steps of the timetable. There are more advanced things that we can do that will be shown later in this tutorial series. Due to the length of this specific tutorial section, 
I have separated out each process we went through into its own chapter so you can go back and revise any section at any point. I have also left a link in the description of this video to Matt Pedelson's brilliant forum thread on scenario basics and the thread on using the turntable which we will not cover in this tutorial series. Thank you for watching this section of the tutorial and see you in the next.